What's the good word, y'all? DKB here, and let's talk about Bryce Hall. You know, is he a top backup? Is he a starter? Uh, is he a piece that could be moved during this offseason? I think that's the critical question we all should have. Um, we've even heard as much as him, you know, can we move him to safety? Uh, can he, you know, benefit us at free safety? That pushes, you know, LaMarcus Joyner back. That pushes Jason Pinnock if we do want to try to keep an extra safety. Um, and, you know, where I fall out in this whole conversation is that I still believe Bryce Hall is, in in essence, uh, still a, a cornerback one, uh, even cornerback two, maybe, depending on how you feel about DJ Reed and his offense. I understand we brought in DJ Reed. We know he's for sure or more likely than not should be manning the outside uh, right side of the, the field for this New York Jets defense. I don't really see him playing in the slot because that's not where he's going to be most effective at. Um, but the left side of the field is essentially open and there's a lot of things that Bryce Hall has going for him. I've talked about all the stats and stuff before in terms of why I feel, let alone the eyeball test, but the stats support it, why I feel like he's definitely uh, a top cornerback in the league. And I'm not saying, you know, top five, not even necessarily top 10, but as a, <clears throat> excuse me, cornerback going into his third year, he's definitely shown that he can be a cornerback one, worst case scenario, an elite cornerback two. And I think that puts us in excellent territory. I also understand we did pick up Ahmad Sauce Gardner, uh, and with the fourth pick, we're definitely expecting he's going to be receiving a lot of playing time, but that doesn't necessarily mean that he's going to automatically be a cornerback one, a cornerback two. He'll have to earn the role, much like Salah mentioned, and we've seen a lot in minicamp that Bryce Hall was actually still manning his starting position, so... I find it interesting. Bryce Hall was actually in a recent interview as well, and he essentially was asked about his thoughts on him being, you know, relegated to a backup role, something like that. And uh, he, he, you know, he takes the high road, and, and his character is one of the things that I love most as well. But everything boiled down to he's his own worst enemy, and he's basically facing himself now. Where does that lead? You know, politics do come into play a little bit, but I think Robert Sala actually tries to support and back up his model that if you are the top guy for the position, you will get it. Um, so Price Hall, I believe he is a starter. I think what we essentially see is DJ Reed will come out for spells, of course, and I think that's when we see maybe a player like Brandon Eccles, who we know for sure is going to be a backup come in and still be able to kind of show his growth in year two. Uh, Bryce Hall, I think, ends up splitting essentially starting snaps with Ahmad Sauce Gardner on the right side. And some of those benefits that I talked about before that Bryce Hall maybe has an edge up on, at least having those two seasons in the league already, is that we've seen him travel and move with the top wide receiver. We've seen it multiple times. And, you know, one of the biggest games that everybody talked about uh, was the Jamar Chase matchup when we were playing the Bengals. When he was able to play him, he didn't completely shut him down, but he made his effectiveness very minimal. Um, I, I mean, to the degree that Burroughs didn't even really want to deliver the ball to Jamar Chase's way because at best it was probably a 50-50 toss-up. Uh, we seen more so often he targeted Chase uh, when he had differing matchups. And so, uh, you know, I think this is the beauty of Bryce Hall. We can move him all around the field. So even when we do take DJ Reed out for chance and maybe we have a Brandon Eccles, we can still move Bryce Hall on whoever it is that we need. Slot, boundary, uh, left side, right side doesn't necessarily matter. He offers a lot of protection in his defense just in terms of opening up something that another player can do. Um, so that's kind of where I fall on it. it. It's not a huge discussion for me, but um, I think Bryce Hall is kind of being moved into this like forgotten space. And let's say, for example, it does happen where Bryce Hall does effectively become a backup He's going to be one of the most elite number threes, potentially number fours, if he doesn't play a slot role uh, in the entire NFL. I mean, having him being able to get matched up uh, against players or teams anyways, like the Cardinals, who like to roll out more of that college style defense. Uh, I'm trying to think who else on our schedule may even roll out 
some more spread offense concepts. I don't think the Ravens will necessarily abide by that because they're truly uh, like one of the the last, you know, run first kind of teams. Uh, but the Steelers have a pretty di- uh, deep roster that they're going to be looking to, uh, you know, roll out, get some experience for. So just kind of matchups like that I'm thinking of if it goes that way. But let me know what your guys' thoughts are. Um, I'm always interested to hear this debate, but you guys know where I stand. So let me know and I'll catch you guys again. Peace.